What a fantastic banjo. Really, really a fascinating piece of history and artwork that we've got here. Don't know a whole lot about this one. This was found in England years ago, um, but we don't think it was made in England. Everything about it, to me, makes me guess that it was, uh, it was American made and probably up in New York. There was sort of a, a school of New York makers up there, kind of, they had a way of doing things. And this has a lot of, some of those characteristics. Um, one of those is the peg head shape. That's what jumps out at me. A lot of people see that peg head shape and they think it's an earlier Dobson or a Buckbee, um, which they, you know, there's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, and also this, you see something, you see how it's got this groove cut at the, sort of at the, at the thumb peg area. That's something seen a lot on, on Buckby banjos, and Buckby was of course in New York. They made, they're mostly known for making cheap crummy instruments, but they also made nice instruments like this. And some were very fine. But this is neat, check out those diamond inlays. Those inlays to me look like they're mahogany, the same as the neck. I believe the neck is mahogany and those, these diamonds are mahogany. That's really, I, I like that, that's cool. My favorite thing about this banjo though, I'd have to say, look at those iron hooks and shoes, man. Those are awesome. They're almost filed into, it looks like they're, I can't tell if they were cast, individually cast like that, or somebody suggested to me that they were a piece of T-bar iron, just a piece of iron with a T-shaped profile that they somebody might have cut out a bunch of pieces and uh, filed them into these slight bow tie shapes like that. Look at those old square nuts on the inside. Really cool. Um, other details in here, there's kind of like this little wooden block in there. That's kind of cool. Other than that, pretty unremarkable on the inside. Like I said, you got a mahogany neck. I believe the, the pot looks like oak to me. I'd say that's an oak pot. Maybe ash, but it looks like oak to me if I had to guess. Um, the other thing I really like about this banjo, check out that partial fingerboard. That's bird's eye maple. I love, I love triangle shapes like this, like basic triangle folk arty mm -hmm. kind of shapes like that. I love that. It almost looks Native American or something to me. I know it's really far off the mark, but that's where it comes at in my mind. And then you've got this you know, sort of classic federal shield mother of pearl inlay there. And this is a flush fretted banjo. It's got frets, it's got brass frets um, inlaid into the, into the fingerboard, but they've been playing flush with the fingerboard. So I can get these great slides. Had an old dog, his name was Blue. Come on Blue, you good dog, you. the sound of that fretless banjo and the flush frets are handy. Another interesting thing is you see how what I would call the ears of the peg head, these kind of ear shapes, these are separate pieces of wood. So this has been, this was a narrower piece of, of, uh, of mahogany that then had some, some pieces glued on the side. And so y'all may be able, yeah you can see it on the front there. I hope y'all can see it. Um, these old antique fiddle pegs, these I don't think are the originals. This poor banjo has had so many different pegs put in it. Um, and it's all, it's kind of busted out. It took me some work to, to try to make these. These are the pegs that were on it when I acquired the instrument. So I wanted to make them work if possible. So it took me a lot of work to, to get them to fit. But I think it's doing tolerably well now. It's got that classic cutout here. I like that, that's cool. Just a wonderful banjo. I mean, I love the hardware. And nothing looks prettier to me than just straight iron hardware. The bridge on here, I made this bridge myself. The original bridge that was on this was, was an early antique bridge. But when I was messing with the strings, trying to put these new strings on there, at one point, this tailpiece string I've got on here popped and the bridge went flying. And y'all, I have not been able to find that bridge. It was a beautiful uh, mahogany or walnut two-legged uh, antique bridge and I it's in my workshop somewhere I will find it but for now I had to make this bridge 
And this is cool too. This is a piece of antique cherry, um, very old cherry. It's submerged lumber off of an extremely old log that, that a friend of mine gave me. So that's a great bridge, you know, that I made for it. I tried to make it nice and thin. I told you all I've been talking to some of these classic players like Aaron, Aaron Jonah Lewis and Jerron Paxton and Joel Hooks. And these guys are sticklers about having a thin, extremely hard, thin, two-legged bridge. So I, this is the thinnest bridge I've ever made, but making it by hand, it's not easy. So one more thing I want to say is uh, the strings I'm using, these were uh, provided by Gamut Music. This is the second set of strings they've given me, and I really appreciate it. These are um, some fine, expensive strings. They're gut strings, and they really are, they've, they've got some kind of system where there's no bulges or flat spots in them or nothing. Comes with instructions on how to tie it in the back. If you tie it correctly, like I did, it should look something, something like that. You just make a couple knots and you burn the end off so it, it goes tight against it. Boy, it's getting windy out here, ain't it? Anyhow, y'all, I guess I'll close it up. I just, I had to show you this banjo because it's just beautiful. Um, let's do another, let's do a swoop with it. This has really got to be one of the cooler instruments that I have seen. I've seen some cool banjos, buddy, let me tell you. But this one is just fantastic. A lot of character. You know, a little bit, maybe a little bit too fancy for me. You know, I like playing, playing instruments. You know, something else, there's something stamped on the head. This is not the original head. It's a skin head, and it says Ludwig and Ludwig Inc. Incorporated. Selected quality. I don't know if y'all can see that stamp well enough to read it. Anyhow, so we got, it's a really fine, a fine piece of hide. Okay, everybody, I won't keep you any longer. Thanks for looking.